Welcome to the PLT Podcast, Lydia. Hello, thank you for having me oh today. God, so good to have you here. I'm very excited to be actually somewhere not in my uni room. Mm, I mean, babes, this has been, this is the first recording that we've done in a year, like in person. I feel like it's a year, yeah? Really? People are nodding around us. It's been a whole year, so like, this human interaction, like, I'm really Honestly, here for it today. Do you know what like I mean? Disneyland being here. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it is quite like Disneyland anyway. I it feel like is. PLT is a bit like magical, like the unicorns like, everywhere. It I is know, pretty like, surreal, isn't it? Honestly, it is. Pink everywhere. Mm -hmm. you know? It's a dream. How's your lockdown and everything been? How have you been? Um, Yeah, no, it's been all right. I mean, there's you get there's tougher moments than better moments. And it's just like, cause I'm up here and I didn't choose to go home for lockdown. So yeah. I'm up here, I'm just at uni with my flatmate. Two girls have actually moved out. So it's only just two of us now in the flat. So we're kind of like each other's <laughs> rocks oh in God, this. Yeah. Like we'll pre we pretty much do everything together now. So there was five of you originally? Four. Did I, am I doing shit maths? <laughs> Four, there can't four. count. Yeah. And oh, wow. Two so of them now moved out, so. Wow. So oh, so it's just extended. the two of you. Yeah. Oh my God, that is crazy. Because this is the thing, I think like lockdown has been wild for everybody, obviously, and everyone's yeah. affected in so many different ways. But for students, it's just been a whole nother world. Honestly, like, because I, I live in private accommodation, so I don't actually live on the campus. Got you. But I have like quite, I have some friends on the campus and they just, their experiences are just wild. Mm. I mean, absolutely wild. Like they got fenced in mm. and there's police on campus all the time. Like they're just having such a crazy experience. And I'm just like, oh my God, it's just chaotic over there. I couldn't even imagine. I went like, this is showing how old I am. I really hate to say this is showing <laughs> my age, but I went to uni a few years ago, we'll call it. And I couldn't even imagine like going through and living through what you're like as crazy as that sounds it's just not normality like what you like how different is it to what you expected university was going to be well i kind of went in with like apprehension because i was like this is not going to be normal i know it's mm. not but i was like okay i'm just going to go and do it because if, if i don't go this year i wouldn't have gone because i had mm. my gap year last year so i was like right. we're just going to go we're just going to see what happens but yeah i did not anticipate two lockdowns at all. I was like, maybe I can do it. Maybe I can do the one and then and then we'll get back to normality. Yeah, and here like, we are like- Yeah, with some restrictions, later. I think it'd be fine. But I, yeah, I didn't expect any of this. But I mean, like we just, you just gotta go with the flow. Like it, there's no point being, I can't be angry that I'm missing out on a uni experience yeah. because it will come back. Like, you know, I'm only in first year. So second year, third year, hopefully might be a little bit more normal. Yeah. So I've just gotta keep waiting for that day. It's so good, like what a positive outlook you've got on it. Because to be honest, that I really didn't know what to expect and what you'd say. Like, I think from my perspective, being an outsider, I would be like, oh, I'm missing out on the massive parties. I'm missing out on like, I mean, even like freshers, like that kind of vibe. Do you miss that at all? Like, I suppose it's not something that you've known. So it was weird because I think the, the, um, the thing that I missed the most was like, going out and like making loads of friends because mm. that's what you do at freshers yeah so like m the people i could become friends with were, was very limited mm. like there's literally a handful but at freshers you usually make like your whole friend group and blah, 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 which is probably um people li who live on campus probably don't have that experience but for mm. me living in private accommodation yeah um so you've moved from a city like you've moved to a new city and not really known anyone how have you found that you said obviously you've, you've got your flatmate but how has it been finding friends essentially um, not finding friends but like settling in again I know what it's you such mean. a big change I know what you mean um I was so excited to come I think it was like that whole lockdown through March to mm. when did that even end I feel when like we've been end? I feel like uh, honestly I feel like we've been in it for 20 <laughs> it years it just sort of I don't it's even like know tomorrow. it blurs into one so <laughs> through that lockdown I was like oh you know what I just can't wait to move out I just can't wait mm. can't wait so I just needed a change so I've really I was really excited to come up here and it has been fun, like beside the restrictions. Yeah. We've been out a couple of times, we've been for dinners, you know. Oh, we've, yeah, cause you got that gap. I got a little yeah. bit and you know, we've we've explored the city a little bit. I mean, we've just got like a little bit of like taste. We've yeah. had little tastes. So I just can't wait to fully be unleashed. Yeah, go Manchester. unleashed. Honestly, I feel like the students <laughs> in Manchester, the students everywhere are just gonna go absolutely wild. I mean, honestly. not even just the students, I'm gonna be on tables somewhere like, Honestly, let us out. I cannot wait. You're up like this. It is going to be insane. I I, honestly, it's, it's just been it's been a wild year or so, a couple of years. It's yeah. it's crazy. But so this was the first time you've moved out. Is that right? Yes, from your parents. First time. First time. All the way from Nottingham. All so the way. how different is like Manchester to Nottingham? 
Nottingham in itself is quite a big city. Mm. It's, it's all right. But um, yeah, Manchester is a whole different ball game. I mean, it's it's huge, <laughs> but it's so much fun. Like I would love just going into the city, like we'll get a coffee, we'll just go for a walk. And every time there's just something, just something new that, or like a little bakery or like a mm. cafe that you just haven't looked at yet. And it's just, I really love it here. I, I f- really do love it. I feel like you're finding all the good spots as well. I always see on Instagram or you're on your YouTube, <laughs> you know, you're at this new coffee shop and I'm like, I'm bloody hell, I've, I've been lived, living here for like four years now and I've not found that place. I better go and find it. My followers really are the best. They'll just DM me like, you have to come here. You have to go there. And I'm just like, right, 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 right. No, so we all just done. make a whole list and I'm like, on our daily walks, like we'll just pop in everywhere. That's so good. That's one thing I guess you can kind of look forward to and like be excited for is finding these new spots. <laughs> I mean, what so else can we do? <laughs> like our highlight of our day is going to get a coffee. So this, this is like this is, another level. <laughs> this is good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you could come here because honestly, it's so much nicer. Like we we sit and we record the podcast virtually, and it's great. But you want to like you want to be able to connect with someone a bit different. Like it's better in person, so it's yeah, so nice definitely. to have you here. But so you've moved into your apartment. You said before it was four of you originally, not five. And you, what what was that like meeting these flatmates? Because did you know any of them before? <laughs> It was that day, literally feels like yesterday. It was literally the scariest moment of my life. Like, because I, private accommodation, they didn't give us like a chat or like, oh, here's the people that you're going to live with. None of that. So I was just like, okay, I know I'm living. I didn't even know how many people I was living with. I had no idea. So in my head, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to live with like four rugby lads or like three. (laughs) Like, I don't even know. Like, I was just like, oh, three. I was just so nervous. I was like, I didn't know who I was gonna get. So I walked in there and I only met one. And I was like, okay, this girl, she's really nice, really nice. And then I unpacked my stuff. My my dad and my sister left and I was like crying. And then I walked out to the corridor and another one walked out and I was like, oh, hello. She's like, oh, hi, you're right, you just moved in. I was like, yeah. Cause I was the last one to move in. Oh my God. So everyone was already in there. Um, yeah, and then I met another one, and then we like went out to Wagamama's and had like that a always, little flat night. You can always uh, break the ice with the Wagamama's, can't really you? Yeah. And yeah, we just—it's really nice. We yeah, we just got to know each other. It was just mm. a little bit awkward at first, you know, because you're sharing a kitchen. Our kitchen's tiny, <laughs> so we're sharing this kitchen, and we're like, "Oh, can I just get there?" You're all being really nice to each other for the yeah, first like day or so. I need to try your pasta. I'm just going to put it out there. Lydia, you That's look like right. you're an amazing cook and baker. And I'm just like, if I lived with you, I'd be buzzing. So they have come up gold. Do you know honestly, what I mean? Honestly, yes. Yeah. We, we, I think during lockdown, we're like, okay, we, we take more time with our meals now. Yeah. Like we'll sit down because there's only two of us. So we'll like plan our meals and all that. And so good. Yeah, she's the best chef as well. She's so good. Is like, she? She blows my mind. Like, honestly. What's her like favorite? What's her best dish oh, that she God. makes? She makes an amazing like stir fry and she makes like fried rice oh my gosh it's insane (laughs) honestly i'm like oh my god (laughs) i love that and with baked oats we've got baked oats going on every day we've had every kind of stage through a lot of done the different things that you're making i've i've enjoyed watching that content i've been here for it honestly i'm like are people gonna get bored of it because i literally do the same thing every day i still need to make baked baked oats honestly and you're like the you're like the ambassador (laughs) i'm gonna call you the ambassador somebody quaker oats should get in touch with you actually (laughs) if you're listening (laughs) You are the ambassador for it. I definitely need to try it. <laughs> they will uh, they'll change life, honestly. I'm going to do it. I'm going to report back to you. But I was thinking, when I was thinking about our chat today and thinking about, you know, did you know any of the girls or the guys or whatever before you moved in? But really, in my head, the bigger question was, did they know you? Because obviously, you do have a huge social presence, YouTube, Instagram. I would imagine that they would have. Well, um... Uh, the girl I live now, her, her name's Alicia, and we did a QA. and a And I asked this question, because when I do a Q&A on my story, that is the most asked question really? that me. Like, did they know you? Or did they really? know you on YouTube? And I'm like, so I said to her, I was like, did you know me? She's like, honestly, I no, I had no idea. <laughs> like, I remember one of the other flatmates, because they were all like, we're all in the kitchen. They were like, can we have like, should we get each other on Instagram? And I was like, what? I was like, yeah. So I got on my Instagram and it was just like a bit of like a... Is it like an awkward moment? Because it's like, do they know you? Who Like, it was just a bit of like, how the hell? Like, what the hell? And I was like, oh yeah, like my job is like, I do YouTube. And then it was like, oh, like I might be vlogging sometimes and like, on the camera. You might like, be in the background. Be like, or... do you mind being in it? And I'm like, oh no, that's fine. That's fine. But like, obviously I oh, get so nervous about vlogging in front of new people. Really? Yeah, I get really nervous. Even in front of my mum, I'm like, <laughs> honestly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that. Cause I like, obviously like the way we're chatting now, like you're so, I think you're so confident and like you obviously speak so well. Like I, co- I couldn't imagine that. That's mad. It takes a lot, it takes a lot. But no, I think one girl was like, 
I think one girl had an inkling, mm. but um, no, my flatmate that I live with now, she had just no clue. So it was just nice. I was just like, just nice. Like just, it was just normal. Yeah. Just normal. And that's what I really wanted. And now she's kind of like featuring on YouTube a lot. And I know that I was going through, I was watching your latest vlog actually, and I was going through the comments and people were just like, we're here for you too. Like, do you know, oh my God, there's a, there's a whole new vibe coming. <laughs> she loves it. She loves it. She's so confident like me. Like she mm. doesn't care about the camera at all. Like she seems so chill. She takes all my Instagram pictures for me. Like she's like, what we need. I know. I'm like, we can you take a picture today? She's like, yeah, I'll come out. Come on then. And I'm like, come on then, let's go. And she's like, it's so good, like on the real though, to like to have someone that kind of understands that one that is your job. So it's like you know, it, it's really helpful it. for you to to have that kind of person. It is great that somebody does actually understand that and and is willing to go out. Honestly, and take she's a dream to live with. Like Aww, she just understands everything. Listening. We're proper guests. I'll make her yeah. sit down yeah. and listen to this. Yeah, we need we need her to listen. I know sure. she helps me. She styles me. She helps me. <laughs> she sits in my room, gives me company. I so, love yeah. it. It's that's amazing. Like I wish I could go back to uni and have that again. Like having girls like in your life constantly being able to live with them. So it's like, yeah, I've missed out on like me and make loads of friends, mm. but I've made one like genuine strong friendship and that's really Friend nice. for life, probably. Yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? You're Honestly. gonna go through so much together. So you said before, I think it was off air, that you're gonna be moving into a new apartment. Yes. Actually. Will you be moving in together? Uh, no, we're not living <gasps> together next year. Oh, hearts that's... are breaking. All the listeners' hearts are breaking right now. It's not a sad thing though. It was just sort of like the idea was posed because like she has a best friend up here, mm. and I have a really close friend from Nottingham who actually goes to uni in Manchester. Oh, no. So like, let's live together. And then it just, I don't know. It was just like people like I wanted to live in the city, and they want to stay in Hollywood. Mm. So it was just like. Just wasn't a natural progression. But yeah, I know she'll be visiting a lot. I'm like, sure she will be. I know, I'm like, are you gonna come visit? Like, yeah, I'm <laughs> so I was like, yeah, you bet, bloody better will. <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing though. I think like, obviously when you're in like a, a kind of uni environment or whatever, when you're thinking about other people or anytime, when you're having to think about everyone else's opinions and decisions, it, it, it does make it hard. So I, I guess if that was just the natural way to go. Sorry guys, yeah. but that's what what's happened. I'm sure we'll still be seeing loads of content of you oh, together. Because obviously restrictions will be down. So mm. we'll be living at my mm. hopefully. So it's Tell me about when you kind of came back to uni after Christmas and everything. Now you touched on before the kind of controversy that was going around with these students getting locked in their apartments. Did you have the opportunity to leave if you wanted to? Um, oh God, it was so long ago. I think I could leave. Yeah, they gave us a travel window. Right. So like each department of the university got like three days where they had to leave in, in that time frame, But it was only recommended. So it wasn't like mandatory. Mm. So it was really weird. It was like, mm. oh, like leave in this time. Oh, but you don't have to. So it was just, uh, honestly, it was so confusing. Mm. But yeah, I left probably like start of December and I came back start of Feb. God. So my Christmas is bloody like two months long. I mean, nice. <laughs> I know. Can't complain about By that. The end of it, I was like, oh, you know, when ready you to get back. Out, yeah. And you you start it. like getting this idea of freedom, then you go back to your mum's, and it's like, wow, I don't miss like you miss your parents or whatever, you know, you do. But it's like I find it. It's like when the the way you clean or the way you wash them, like you do it so differently, don't you? And these little oh. So I yeah, made up for the time I'm not going home now. I made up for it at Christmas. Oh. So I was there for like. Two and a half months. That is that is nice. It sounds like you had a really good Christmas. But that was such a wild time because I remember even like obviously just watching the news and seeing students, especially in Manchester. It's and I don't know whether that's because I'm based in Manchester that that's the kind of news that I was fed. But all I saw was students angry, upset, confused. Like, I had no idea what was going on. Was it kind of like a scary time for you? It was, it, especially like around campus, it was like of such a weird atmosphere mm. because like I saw, cause I only live, I don't know, I live like a throne stir away from campus mm. and they were putting up like these like scaffolding. Like, like barrier, like literally enclosing locking them. people in. And yeah. my friend who lives on campus, like we were just gonna go for a walk. And then she was like, oh, like there's security at the door. Like, so they're not letting me go out. And cause I, she had a big bag. So she was helping me shoot mm. some content and she had a big bag and they were like, you're going to go home. Cause you got a big bag. She was like, no, I'm, not, I'm just taking pictures. She's like, no, I have to go back inside. <gasps> she wasn't allowed to leave. Like, honestly it was, and I was like, just, just leave. And they were like, honestly, I can't. Like there's literally security at every, every door. That must be like, so scary. Honestly, I was just like, oh my God, so claustrophobic. And like, mm. like why can't I leave? Like what was being trapped. Even? Some food or something. I don't, do you know what I mean? Mm. So it was just, it was so, so weird. So you've been quite fortunate that because you're in private accommodation, you've not really had to go through that. No, I haven't. But but seeing it and hearing it from your friends is scary enough. Like knowing it's a real thing is scary enough, isn't it? I know. And like, I think it was at the beginning of the year, because obviously we have live seminars mm. um, and it, everyone on campus was isolating. 
no shit. All their flats were isolating. Yeah. So like on the live Zooms, they were like, oh, who's isolating? And it was like, it was like the majority of the Zoom, but it was majority of the Zoom isolating, but me and like one other. And I was like, oh my gosh. So they all had to go through that, like no food. And it was just horrible. I couldn't even imagine. Like, this is the thing I just think, like I said before, I couldn't imagine being a student during these times. I know that obviously there's so much going on in the world and everybody's imp impacted by, you know, this pandemic in so many different ways. But I just couldn't imagine going through that. And I think we spoke before off air about being a student now during these times, like your day to day, what is it actually like? Very, my days are the same. <laughs> like that's how I sum it up. They're literally the same. And that's what I'm worried about. Like when I'm vlogging, I'm like, do you want to see the same day? Mm, mm. Cause this is what I'm living. And they're like, yeah, I want to see it. And I was like, all right. So I wake up, make my baked toast, make my green juice, do some reading, do a lecture. Then maybe I'll do some makeup. We'll go for a daily walk. I'll take a content picture, yeah. an outfit, come back. Oh no, get a coffee when we're out. Oh yeah, don't forget the coffee, Starbucks, obviously. Do some more work, make dinner with my flatmate, eat that, um, do some more work, go to bed. <laughs> and what, what, what is the actual like learning side like of it? Because like, again, taking it back to my experience, like obviously all of my things were physical. Like I've never had to learn online. It's, it's, it, oh God, I don't know how to sum it up. Because I don't know what it's like to be in a lecture hall and like mm. actually get yeah. to uni, it's more just like an all right, like just taking it how it goes. Mm. But I can imagine for the students that have actually been in and know what it's like that now they're like, oh my god, like what mm. the hell am I doing? Because you get, I have six pre-recorded lectures a week and then three live sem seminars. So like these lectures, like they just here you go. It's like a podcast. It's like a podcast. You sit there. It's good training. You've got a little lecturer and she's talking to you and it's just like a it's like a podcast and then you have to do your notes. Um so if you have like any immediate questions, it's do you know what I mean? It's more just like yeah. okay, I need to write down these questions and then email at her and then wait for a reply and then it's all very do you know what I mean? Like clunk clunky is the word I'm thinking of, yeah. like difficult. Like it must be difficult for her as a le like the lecturers, like not know. being able to speak to her students properly. And then for you guys, like waiting for responses as well. Like normally when you could just go, I mean that's Hello. like school, but put your hand up in the air. I've got my hand in the air for anyone that's listening. <laughs> like, miss, we're not in school anymore. But do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you would just kind of like ask that question. So I feel like that's such a strange environment to be in. But like you said, you you're kind of used to it. But yeah. how do you stay disciplined with it? Because oh, I God. I can't <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, guys. I wasn't always um, on time to things, and I wasn't sometimes no, I gave myself a little day off when I shouldn't have. Do you stay disciplined with it all? Um, well, it it deeply stresses me out when I'm in a sem seminar and I have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, it stresses me out. So I'm like, if I don't do this work, I'm gonna be upset at myself because I'm not gonna That's be able to know what they're talking about. Yeah. So it's all right. Sometimes you know we've got like eleven. It's at eleven p.m. and we have to do a lecture, but. It's all right because I just miss it, and then the seminars the next Got day, you. and I need to cram so you'll it catch in. Up. Yeah, but it's it's all right if I just do two lectures a day, Monday to Wednesday. It's all right. Got a little routine going on. I mean, it's good, like good for you, like getting yourself in that routine. And I think, yeah, I, I suppose it kind of is nice because you don't have to get up at like seven a.m. and eight a.m. being a lecture or whatever. And also, it just gives no. me a routine in lockdown. Yeah, don't which everybody so, needs. Like I have things to do, and I'm not just sat in bed like I don't know what to do. Yeah. Like like I was last summer. So it actually gives me structure. Yeah. So I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Good, good. And what are you studying? I know that for some people might know what you're studying, but tell us about what you're studying. Oh, I'm doing history. Wow. Okay, that history. is a subject. Uh, I mean, I, I was saying to you before off air, I did drama. So I, I, I joke, sorry to anyone that did drama as well. That uh, My degree was more of a physical, fun. I get that. There's a bit of... Um, Mine's just like everyone's a laughing lot. in the room at me. <laughs> Why are you laughing, guys? <laughs> Go on. Yours must be so full on. Mine's just like a lot of reading, mm. a lot of different, mm. yeah, no, a lot of different time periods. So everything like sort of interlinks, but I'm really enjoying it. Like I've loved history ever since I was little. Like my, it was mostly my mum that got me into history, but I've just loved it. Wow. Um, yeah, and I'm enjoying everything. Obviously, there's modules that you like more I was than others. Say, like what, like so obviously history is quite a. I mean, I don't know whether it's... Oh, it's bloody I like... I didn't learn much. I was bad in high school, but like, it's a broad subject. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of history happened in the past, how many decades, whatever. Honestly. Like, what what kind of things do you like most? Oh, oh God. So I did an ancient, like, Roman Greece module last That's, semester. That sounds interesting. Never again. Really? Never again. <laughs> like? Never again. Yeah, me and my history I was like, oh, I'm Italian. Like, ancient Rome might yeah. be cool. <laughs> never again. Really? Like, it was... 
I just hated it. I just no offense to any ancient history lovers out there, but I hated it. I just could not do it. So um ancient history is a big no no. Right. Okay. Probably just like um probably just like like Victorian Britain Ooh. and like nineteenth, eighteenth century is my favourite, if anyone I know it's probably nerdy. It's like I know, no, I love the eighteenth century. No, I, think so, I think it's so interesting. I wish I knew more to be honest. I mean, obviously I it strikes a few things in my mind, but I'm I'm not the most clued up on history. Mm-hmm. But I think um it, it's it's always good when someone's like when you're passionate about something and you're interested in something. And I think I anyone can be interested in it when you talk about it. It makes the degree a lot easier. Yeah. Because I'm actually like reading things that I want to like mm. know and learn about. So it makes it a lot easier. So what are you like what, what module are you working on at the minute? Um okay, so I've got a modern China. Oh. Um, oh God. Like French Revolution, like Europe in that era. French Revolution, yeah. And then I've got a oh god, what's the last one? Oh, um, American history. Wow. So like World War Two, yeah. Ronald Reagan and all that. So yeah, they're fun, they're fun modules. It sounds intense. It sounds really intense. Um, yeah, it is, but it's it's doable. Like it's manageable. And it's like you say, if you enjoy something. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. And so how, obviously we said before that you're kind of not really missing the uni experience because this is kind of the uni experience that you've got, but what are you really looking forward to doing when you have got the real, the full on uni experience? Like, is there going to be, wait, I guess, do people even do like glow stick tours anymore? <laughs> no, don't judge how old I am. I mean, like, you know, like what I'm, I'm looking at people in the room in case anyone knows what I mean, like you might, but like they used to do like on a fresh is that on a Monday. Why are you really laughing? This is not that bad, surely. Am I that old? Like, a t-shirt like a what did you used to have a glow stick part no oh my god there's no like zoo parties and like yeah neon like parties that. and stuff neon like that zoo parties. that's what i meant guys because they had like Shut a mini they, we had like a mini freshers which i didn't attend in september which oh, is all those no parties way. but it was all socially oh wait so that was because you couldn't yeah it was all right. socially distant got you it was a bit weird so i didn't attend <laughs> so um, none of them what, when we come out <laughs> what am i excited for <laughs> So many things on my list, you have no idea. Well, when I first came to uni, I was like, I want to do like a freshers meetup. Like, oh, how much fun would that be if yeah. I was like, come to this club, like, we're all going to have drinks, how we're going to have dance, and it would be oh so much God. fun. And like, all my subscribers or like followers or anyone in my just would come. Like, how much fun would that be? That's so, I wanted to do that. That's definitely on the list. And just like, yeah, just like make friends and like explore like people outside my flat, like, actually grass go out and meet some new experience. people literally go to a couple of bars literally. go to parties literally just yeah get the f- um just be unleashed on the city really and That's you did say favorite. in a recent vlog that you felt quite anxious about going out into like restaurants <laughs> and i guess the real world again tell me about that is that because of just the thought of so many people being there or is it just going back to kind of normal i guess yeah i think it's just going back to normal like i haven't put on an outfit and gone out for like other people to see in ages. Like obviously I just wear my outfits for my content. Mm. So like I haven't actually been to, like a restaurant or like a bar, like in an actual outfit that people are looking at me in, in ages. And it's just it's like- a weird feeling. Oh, I know, like you know doing your makeup and you're like, oh, like mm. I need to reapply my lip gloss. Like all of that, like I need to touch up my hair. All of that is just an, a distant memory. So I think it's just, Going back into like, okay, like, oh God, yeah, I remember this, I remember mm. this. I think it's just getting back into it. Mm. Cause we're so, I'm so out the loop. Like this is my new normal. Mm. So now that the thought of that is so far away and so distant, it's quite scary. It just doesn't seem real, doesn't it? I think that's the thing. So many people are gonna be in the same position, feeling yeah. this kind of like anxiety about going back into- It does. Like it the does. normal world and it's weird cause we had that time. <clears throat> We had that time last year where it's like, okay, we're going back to some kind of normal. And we were like, woo, like we're back. And then it was like, oh no, 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 back in again. And it was like, we were out for like a few weeks or whatever and going to restaurants, but it was, I I mean, I don't know about you, but I found it so strange and surreal being in these restaurants and having like plastic shields and your temperature taken. And And then I remember like every time you get up on the the table, like you had to put your mask on and I'd I'd, like to go to the toilet and you have to walk and I'd always forget my mask. I'm like, oh my God, it's, it's just such a, like panic and it yeah it's just not it's not the same is it no it's not the same at all it's not but something that seems to have kept you really busy throughout lockdown is of course your youtube you've got over seventy four thousand subscribers which isn't to be messed with i mean wow that's a lot of people watching your content every day it's crazy how have you found creating content during this time you said before like you know you run on people if people want to watch you every day but how have you genuinely found it um it's navigating it has been interesting mm. so like last 
last year was so much easier because I was at home. So I was like tie dyeing, baking. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it was just like a free for all in yeah. my house. Like <laughs> we were just doing anything and everything. Um, but I think at uni it has been a lot harder because I am confined to my mm. room. I'm confined with people who I can vlog with. Like, so it's just like my flatmate. Like I can't, do you know what I mean? And mm. it's just like me on my own talking about my lecture, like, or making my baked oats. And it's just like, do people want to see this every day? Mm. Cause this is what I do. I had the same day every yeah. day. But I've um I get loads of DMs like yeah I love it. It's it just, seems like it's oh, just it normal. Seems like they do they're like mm-hmm. like like say I was going through your comments on like your most recent vlog and people are here for it. You know you've got such like a loyal real life. audience yeah. and that's it. Like I guess sometimes it's obviously samey for you, but to other people it's a break from their kind of reality and it's Definitely. just it's just entertaining for them to see. So your when life. I found out I was coming here, I was like I'm gonna fuck it. Oh my I'm god, yes, it. guys, vlog is coming. If it's not out before this, it's coming. Get ready. Yeah, I'm actually going something. somewhere. Like <laughs> I'm gonna vlog this for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's just me like trying out new Starbucks drink. Like that's all <laughs> I can do. Yeah, but you know what? I, I saw yesterday. What did you have yesterday? Peach and lemonade or something? Oh my god, everyone's just... going off crazy. Like, what's the new drink then? Okay, we need to. And do you know what? That that's just that's where we're at in the world right now. Peach it's... green iced tea of lemonade. Was it good? It's amazing. I'm that's my summer I'm drink. Try it. Maybe I'll go tomorrow. You know, it's Saturday. Okay. On the note of a YouTube, something um, a bit more serious I wanted to talk to you about. You recently vlogged when you were out walking yes. and a man actually verbally harassed you. Yes. Which, I mean, with everything kind of that's gone on in the past couple of weeks, I mean, it, yeah. it's horrific in the first place, but with everything that's kind of gone on in the last couple of weeks, how did you kind of feel in that moment? Like, was it before the- It was before. Um. Well, cause I have to shoot a lot outdoors. It's quite common, me, like me taking a picture. Like, I don't understand what's so interesting mm. about me standing in a tracksuit, taking mm. a picture of myself. Like, I don't understand what's so, oh my God, about that. Mm. So I was literally, I know it's not about clothing at all, mm. but the things that he was saying to me did not, like he was saying like, oh, get your ass out, get your ass out, when I was in leather trousers. So I was like, how does that, correlate like how does that so he was but even but I, even if you had like shorts or like a little skirt on so it's just like still not appropriate like, what would you say to me if i had shorts on then like mm. it's just crazy but i i find it not i find it more common when i'm like taking pictures mm. around and i know many of my friends they go on runs around like manchester mm. and they get beeped at a lot and it puts them off running they're like i don't want to run I, I feel Safe. yeah i just feel like horrible like i'm literally in a hoodie and yoga pants and you're beeping at me mm. like what I'm literally trying to get my daily exercise or whatever yeah like I'm just going for a run like clear my mind and they just can't even do that and this, that's what's really sad this is the thing there's obviously been this huge kind of focus in the media obviously after such unfortunate tragic events that continued to happen um and like I said the media focus on it in the past few weeks has been has been you know really intense and I think for a lot of women it, it brings up a lot of kind of emotion and anger it's close to home, and, I, and I guess for if you're if that had happened to you following kind of what has happened in the last few weeks do you think you'd have reacted differently um I think I definitely would have stood up for myself more mm. like because I felt quite safe because I was with my flatmate mm. um but I think I definitely would have stood up for myself more and mm. got his reg you know got him on yeah. camera so I had evidence but I mean it's just like, I don't, like, it's scary. Like, mm. we're a grown man shouting at you. Like, what, what can I do? Like, it's really quite mm. scary, really intimidating. And um, especially when I'm just a, I'm just taking a picture. Like, I'm just taking a picture. Just let you live. Do you know what I mean? I'm, let us live. It's my job. Like, I have to do that. Like, so it's, But even if it wasn't, crazy. like, you're taking a picture. This is, And this is the thing. I mean, it, I find it hard not to get, like, irate about, about the conversation because I think, you know, you said that that video, that situation scenario happened to you prior to kind of the media coverage that we've seen in the past few weeks. And even then, I think I was saying to the guys off air before that as women, I think for so long, we've, we kind of as upset and as, you know, you, you mentioned it in a vlog and as annoying it is, you just like it is part of life. Like it's not acceptable. It never has no. been, but it is. it has been a part of life for women for so long, which is just. I know. And it's something that you just have to live with. And I think that's. Like, if you actually Outrageous. sit and think about that, mm. like a man, you imagine if a man was taking a picture and we were shouting at him, like, it's just- cr- Well, the obscenity, like, like, imagine what we would, sh- like- I know. If you flipped it on its head, like the kind of things we would shout to a man, like, no, no. no. But I think um, it's something that's very real and happens mm. every day. Mm. 
honestly. And how do you feel like being a young woman in this new city? How do you feel when you are out and about, especially on your own? I, well, I watched, oh God, what's it called? Yorkshire Ripper on Netflix. I watched that over over um, December. Mm. And I, walking around Manchester, I do, I feel relatively safe, but then I watched that and it really triggered something inside of me. And walking around now on my own, it's, um, you've got to have your wits about you. I'm always, no music, always clutching my phone, always on edge because it's scary. But it should be, this is the thing. And again, the, the conversations that have happened after, you know, the tragic events over the past few weeks um, have been that women have done that forever. It's about, you know, what are we wearing? What, like, what have I got a key in my hand? I remember yeah. when I first moved to Manchester and and I was like, oh, walking to work, like there's this little alley and it's a bit thingy. And I remember one of the girls who's so strong and so, you know, just like knocks everything on the head. She's yeah. like, yeah, just put, put put some keys in your hand, have your key. And I've always, to this day, always. still, if I'm ever on my own, I have a key. And I mean, I don't want to hurt nobody, but um, <laughs> but that's how deep it is. Like that, yeah. that is how real it is for- And that's just a natural reaction yeah. for you to mm. walk down the alleyway. That's your natural instinct. Is to be scared. And that's outrageous. It honestly. is. It is like, I mean, obviously we, we could talk about this subject forever. And I think obviously even just us speaking about it and I think the heightened kind of media coverage is kind of needed for people to realize um, and, and to hopefully bring some change. And I think the conversation the past few weeks has also it changed, it, it went from kind of women being out, I mean, we're still outraged, we're, we're always gonna be outraged always. about it, but it kind of changed into this conversation of, okay, um, what can men do to make us feel safer as women? Yes. So if there was any men listening now, what kind of advice would you give from a female point of view to make us feel safer if you are passing us in the street or you're out and about at night on your own? I'd say probably just cross the road, mm. overtake us, so we know that like there's no, because that was the thing about the York Stripper thing that scared me, was people walking behind me. Um, so yeah, cross the road, um, make quite a lot of noise, so we know that like people know that you're not like threatening and like yeah. trying to creep up on girls. Yeah. So you yeah, make a lot of noise, cross the road. Um, and then if you do see something, weird or oh please say something and please come over to that girl mm. and help her pretend to be her boyfriend mm. or pretend to be her friend or whatever because you could save someone's life honestly literally that is that is how serious it is and I think sometimes um I don't know about you but I feel like if say I'm in a situation when I feel uh threatened let's say by a male um I feel rude for possibly looking like I feel threatened because then I feel, you know, I which isn't, it shouldn't be like that, but I don't like, I why am I worrying about this guy <laughs> that I'm like, oh my God, I don't want him to think that I'm scared of him, but I am. But like well, the because, reality is I am. Because you don't know, you don't know anyone, like, you know, it's embedded in you since mm. you were young that don't talk to strangers, don't go near strangers, that's mm. embedded in you. Yeah. So then, you know, you don't know someone's intentions, you never do. They might look like a nice person, but Ted Bunny looked like a nice person. So it's just like, you just you just never know. Mm. So I, I wouldn't, I know what you mean, but I wouldn't. It's a great bit of advice you gave like for, for any, any men that are listening. I think obviously, just us speaking about it, I think, I mean, I know we're obviously a female, dominated brand but if there were any men listening um I think it's good for us to speak about it just to raise that awareness more Definitely. um my dad used to say to me and still does say to me you know at the age that I'm at you know don't walk lo alone at night and whatever and I used to be like why why and oh, no. why I'm like I'm fine dad I can look after myself and I'm like Oof. you fully start like and I think obviously awareness and everything does grow when unfortunately these tragic events happen that shouldn't happen um i mean it's embedded into my daily life like i'll come back from the library when it's light you know i can't be past the library at like 7 p.m because if i'm on my own like i get scared like i can't go to the shop if it's dark like if i need some milk or some chocolate i want a snack like i just stop myself because mm -hmm. oh yeah i'm scared mm -hmm. i'm scared and i don't want to go out on my own and if something might well, that's happen. That's how real it is. Yeah, that's something might happen, and I don't know. That's the thing, and 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 that's the whole kind of thing of it. it, it we shouldn't feel like that. I know. Um. So yeah, I think to anybody listening, if there is male, maybe or you know, or not, take kind of the things we've spoken about. Um. You know, as advice, and yeah, I mean, hopefully these conversations and further conversations that I know people are having will start to see some change and I think just more understanding from a women's perspective Definitely. of what we kind of go through and, and how real um, and how bad like a little cat call can be because people just think it's nothing but 
You can mess up your whole day. Oh, literally. Yeah, we don't want to be beeped at. We don't want to be shouted at through through a window. I mean, what are you She's trying to achieve? To? What are you what trying are you to achieve? What do you think you're going to get out of it? So yeah, if you ever think about doing that, just think about what you what no. what's your end result? What do you want? Because we're, we're not interested. So please don't. Um, no, thank you. But yeah, so thank you for going over that topic. Because I know it is like as a female, it is such a personal topic, and it's something that we don't actually really speak about that much. And I think. I think we should speak about it more. Yeah. I think it's good to, because um, when you when you then talk about this topic, you realize how real and how prominent it is in every day. Mm. And every woman that you speak to, everyone's got a story. Mm. Everyone's got personal experience that you can relate to. And mm. it's just like, when you then open up the discussion, mm. it's like, whoa, mm. like, whoa. Like, well, I like, didn't realize. I could feel it with spirit. you there. Like, just like, obviously, like when we started speaking, I was like, you know, there was we had a couple of points on it to to kind of go over, and I think the more I, I could sit and speak to you about this for year for days for hours because we've literally grown up through it. And I was saying to the guys before you came in, you know, when we were lightly going over the the topic of conversation, that there's so many. If I sit here now and think about events where I felt uncomfortable, these scenarios where these kind of things have happened to me as a female there's countless but I have to sit and think because you just forget about them and put them to the back of your mind because you're so used to them happening yeah I know which and is, that's it's that's crazy it should never be like that that's crazy I know it should never be like that but yeah so thank you for chatting to us about that because I think right. it is um I think it's a topic that needs to be more widely discussed about. especially I know I'll be talking about it in my vlogs and mm. my dms are always open and I always you know the discussion's always there if you ever like you know, need someone to yeah, talk to. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And I think this is the thing, other females, like I'm sure your sub subscribers know they can kind of talk to you in your comments and whatever. Yeah, um, yeah reach out to people and speak to people. And Definitely. We've got to feel safe in this world at some point. Um, it's women, a crazy we've got to look world. after women. We've got to look after women, that's it. We've got to look after women. Now, going back to your social media. So yes. we spoke a little bit about your YouTube before, but your Instagram is also on fire. How are you finding <laughs> getting such good content when you've got nowhere to go right now because honestly you're killing it um i don't know it's it's a lot of it gives me something to do it yeah. gives me something to do like on our daily walk i'm like oh let's get a picture let's get a starbucks like it's something to do it gives structure to our days and i love dressing up picking yeah. outfits like feeling nice as well yeah like doing my hair like putting on a new top like it's all just like high, little highlights of my day and it's just like doing what I love doing what I love to do really yeah but yeah I don't know what it's like to like wear an outfit and like sit down in a restaurant actually like, have I, to wear it you think about all these like dead nice outfits that we like and like you know when you put it on for a pick or whatever and you're like yeah I can take that five minutes later but you know when it's something that's like and I'm really like, sucking honestly, and then you've got to go and sit and eat in it honestly, I can't I can't think about wearing jeans again in a restaurant or at all no I know jeans you don't uh, jeans you don't like, exist anymore, my sorry. wardrobe is just like jogger sets mm -hmm. like hoodies and I'm just like I can't wear this to a restaurant in summer <laughs> I need clothes like literally I'm what gonna, are we gonna do April 12th you see me like shirts, in a drug suit shirts like, I'm gonna be like oversized shirts buttoned up I so know. I can eat all I want drink all I want and just feel comfortable yeah 100% that is exactly the vibe I need <laughs> and what about so obviously you are Chinsia's younger sister yes do you guys ever plan on working on any collaborative like content um, I know obviously she's got Sophia but you're her you're her we're uh, with the three musketeers the three musketeers maybe someone I mean, could, could wait Tri triple, triple content. I was going to say quadruple. That's we, you know, really... we go on all our holidays together. Went to LA yeah. last year. It was so much fun. Looked amazing. Our holidays are the most hilarious thing I have ever Tell us, seen. tell us some, Experience. like, tell us some um, secrets or some funny stories. What's your funniest oh. story or funniest memory with them two? Oh, God. Oh, you've got God. to have one. One you've not told this anyone is... as well. Oh, Exclusive, God. please. I'm going to sit back for this. <laughs> Just think. Oh, okay. I've got a funny one. Go on. Go okay, on. so we're in LA and uh, we went to Catch Restaurant, which is super Whoa. popular, and yeah. all the celebrities and influencers go there. So we were really nervous. We're like, oh, we're gonna spot. Can you can you? <laughs> we were walking. I think everyone <laughs> saw that when they go to Catch. Literally. And there was when we pulled up, there was like Paps outside, and we're like, who is it? Ready who is it? it? And then this like massive like black van pulls up, and this like um, Korean band get out of it. And we're very far away. Like, we're at the end of the street. But my little sister and Chinsia are massive fans of BTS. Oh, yeah. They love they're BTS. Huge. They're huge. So, Chinsia, we're literally in the middle of the road. She s grabs me and spears, and spears, slams us down. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's BTS. BTS. Stop. Stop walking. And I'm like, we're going to literally get run over. So, she, we get to the other side. She's hyperventilating. She doesn't even know it's them. Like, we're down the road. She's hyperventilating. She's like, I need to bring Mariana. I need to bring Mariana. I was like, it's 6 a.m. And... <laughs> 
England. Like you can't <laughs> ring Mariana. Like she'll be in school or something. <laughs> So she walked in and um, there was like a queue and they were in front of the queue and she was like, she's like, she like, she like, what? She was like looking and we were like, what? And she was like, she like, oh, it's not there. And I was like, you have just made such a fuss. She was like, oh my God, she was texting Mariana. She was trying to call her. <laughs> like she was literally shaking, like she was shaking. And I'm like, are you joking? She's like, no, it's not them. And then she checked their Instagram and they were in like Italy or something. Oh she was like, my oh, God. it's not them. And I was just like, oh my God. It got me to feel just like, you're an idiot. <laughs> Everyone's heart's <laughs> racing. You're absolutely shitting yourselves. Like, oh my God, we need to get here I for Chinsey or she's going to lose her <laughs> head. Idiot. And it wasn't them. So that was the highlight of our night. I've got, got a sore, I've got a sore jaw from that. I, was, I, I really enjoyed that story. She, I wish it was for her. One of the first people I've ever met. She, she seems so Every cool. time I see her, she makes me wet myself. Like she just is hilarious. It's good that you guys have got such a good relationship. Yes, she is like, I am like, she's like my twin. Like we are mm. the same person mm. and people are like, you've got the same voice. I'm you like, do have the yeah. same voice, I love it. We have the you've same voice. Like, voices, we actually. have the same, oh God, I don't know. Same voice, the same laugh, like the same personality. Like we'll find everything funny. Our styles are a little bit different, mm. just a little bit. And like Sophia's style is a little bit different. But we all compliment each other. Yeah, you do, styles. you do. But it's nice that you've all got like yeah, your own kind of vibes. Very similar to very similar to me. How many years apart are you guys? Three. So three. it's three between me and Chintzy, and then we've got a younger sister who's also three years. Wow. I'm smack bang in the middle. Wow. Oh my god, that's actually crazy. That it's three years each. Honestly, I was, was that like, planned like that? Probably. Wow. Well done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think it was. It's weird though with the sisters. Like I was mm. closer to my younger one as we were growing up. Like we used to dress the same. Like yeah. mum used to, oh. you know, we used to get like Bowdoin catalogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we used to tick what, tick we, what you wanted. The same thing. So we'd always twin. That was when I was younger. And then like when I started school, sixth form, um, and like Chinsy was going out a lot mm. and she had Sophia and she was like, the makeup and hair. That and was, was when like, she was really oh, getting. I want to go out. And like, <laughs> <laughs> so then we became really close. Like, I used her ID, I went out. That's what, that's what sisters, oh, that's what older sisters are there for. The I didn't have a sister, was, unfortunately. But I went to this, it, she was going on holiday the next day with Sophia and all my friends were going to this club and I was like, I really want to go. I really want to go. And I was like, where's her? I can't find her ID. And I was like, where, where is it? It. so I took her passport and she was going on holiday the next day and I went to this like club like everyone's jumping around and I'm like girl I'm in this bag oh dear life I'm like do not lose this passport do not lose this passport because she will not be able to go on holiday um but yeah it was fine got home she got home passport was fine I put it back on a the fear table. the fear of like back in the day when you used to use someone else's ID and it's like if you got it taken off you they're like yeah that's not you and yeah. they took it and you're like oh <gasps> And I didn't tell her. And I think I told her. Like, you didn't tell her? Months. No, I didn't tell her. I didn't tell mom. I was like, oh, oh I'm just shit. using someone else's. So I told her six months later, she was like, Baby, do you know what? You got away with it. So at the end of the day, <laughs> no one was harmed. And I think I had a good No night. one was harmed in the Sorry process. You had a good night. That's all that matters. Do you know what the worst thing was when all your mates were going out, especially when you were right. underage and you couldn't go out? No. Right. That was right. that is the worst film I've ever experienced in my whole life. So yeah. Exactly. And completely appreciate it. I'd have done the same. So thank you, Chincia. <laughs> I think my little sister will probably do the same thing with me. One hundred percent. She will. She's gonna follow in the footsteps. Dreading it. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little shit to Chinsia, but I couldn't imagine having a sister. I've got a brother, but if I had a sister, oh, you're older or younger. All her clothes. Oh, well, I would completely one. rinse everything. All makeup. makeup. Like she used to be, she used to get angry, but like she would <laughs> to the, I'd get, oh my God. If my little sister took my things, like the way I get angry and the way Chinsy gets angry, <laughs> it's just two other ball games. Really? Like, she's just like, oh. And she'll be like, oh, and that's it. And then that's, she's that's over the extent it. of her angry And what's yours like? Oh God. <laughs> Roof. <laughs> We won't show that today. I'm a bit like that as well. Bit like what's the what's the saying? You yeah, yeah. So I used to get away with murder with Chinsia. Get away with you know murder. What? That's middle child, I guess. You can yeah. do that. Do you know what I mean? That's the perk. She's just quite laid back as well. She's quite relaxed compared to me. I'm like, oh. oh. So she didn't really. She kind of let things then. slide over her. <laughs> That's a fortunate way to be. Now, obviously, you're at uni. You're killing it in the influencer world. What are your hopes and dreams for the future? I know that's a big question and there's no pressure because I don't believe you'd need to have your life together till you're ready for it. <laughs> but like, what are like your kind of like aspirations and future dreams? Um, oh God, it's such a big question. Mm. I kind of just like, now I'm just like going with the flow. Um, but I think I definitely want to like start a blog. Like my big interest is in writing. Like I used to write Aww. stories when I was younger. 
Um, so I really do love writing. So maybe like a blog or like, you know, like um, a column in a magazine would be really fun or like have my own section. Lydia's column. Something like that, like something to do with writing. So I think this year I'm really gonna work on setting up my own blog, like put all my recipes on there. Yeah, and, like so little much tips, content you like, put about on. uni. Like I'm really excited because as much as I love my vlogging and talking, mm. I think I would also love doing that. So I'd love to do that. Oh yeah, and with my uni degree, people mm. always ask me, they're like, oh, like, so if you become bigger on YouTube, like, are you gonna leave uni? And I'm like, I'm like, no. They're like, oh, mm. do you wish you don't have to go to uni? And I'm like, no, like, you've that's chosen my to go choice. to uni. Yeah. Like, uni was the plan before YouTube was. Mm. So I always knew I wanted to go do history. That was always the plan. And YouTube kind of just fell and it kind of just happened. And it, it's turned out for the best. Like, if it didn't happen, if it didn't su- succeed, then it is what it is. There wasn't but anything lost, yeah. You no, know, it's meant to be. So I kind of just juggled the two quite happily. And I want to do both. Like, it's not this over this. Or yeah. They work either. quite um, well together. Mm. So, yeah, we don't know really what we're going to do with my degree. But um, <laughs> I'm sure life will surprise me. I can tell you from experience that um, it doesn't matter. You do you. You do you. I've got a drama degree. I mean, I guess this fits with it a little bit. Little but, bit. yeah. You um, do it as a musical production. You know, oh, I, I could do a little something now if you want it. <laughs> little bit of Romeo and Juliet. Taylor. On, oh, I'll tell you. Let, let, let's get that. Would be a, that's a story for another day, Lydia. But honestly, it, it's been amazing getting to know you today. I think I've loved getting to know you. It's been so nice actually chatting to someone in person. So like, fun. I feel like you've made me realize how much I miss it. So, thank, thank you, you so, I'm so much. I'm excited to get back out there. Yeah. I mean, when you're back out there, let us know. PLT, oh. get here. We'll go out. We'll do dinner. We'll do the whole. 100%. The whole I'm lot. so excited. I can't wait. And, you know, good luck for everything in the future. I know that whatever you do is going to be amazing. You're obviously working so hard at everything you do. Um, so, yeah, more great things to come. Thank We're you. ready for it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been literally like Disneyland ah. today. I'm on a high today. <laughs> we've actually left the house. Yay, we've got a different vlog content think, today. Yay! Glad for that in the room. <laughs> I need to vlog, actually. <laughs> we'll do vlog. some vlogging right now. Well, yeah, Lydia, well. it's been amazing. Thank, thank you, you so much so, for having so me. Much. It's been incredible. And to all of our amazing listeners and watchers back home, thank you so, so much. This has been PLT Behind Closed Doors with the gorgeous Lydia. Thank you so much Woo! for having me.